Welcome to another broadcast and study on faith. As we've said in the previous messages, there are thousands of promises in the Word of God, and every one of them can be appropriated by a simple act of faith on your part, if you know what faith is and how to use it. As we've said, too, so few Christians really know what faith is, but the Word of God shows us what it is and how to apply it. Faith is the substance of that which you pray for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. You may want to send for the other tapes on this subject, for we have a series of tapes on the subject of faith which covers all the conditions. Ask for the faith series. Ask for the tape and book list if you've not heard all the messages, or if you want the tapes in order to play them over and over and profit from their teachings. Now, what is faith? Faith is that which pleases God, for without faith we cannot please Him, Hebrews 11.6. Romans 14.23, that which is not of faith is sin. How can you know when you're praying the prayer of faith? When the Word of God is the only basis for your believing that you have received the answer when you pray, then that's faith and not hope. If you need any other assurance or evidence, if you're looking for feeling or evidence in the sense realm to see if God has answered your prayer, that's not yet faith, that's hope. Now, we've covered all that on the previous messages. What is faith? Faith is that which enables you to appropriate all the promises of God. We've said there are five conditions, and we want to begin with the first condition in this message. We receive the promises by faith, but we cannot receive them unless we have faith. And how do you receive the faith in order to obtain what God has promised? That's Romans 10:17. For faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and believing the word of God. There's nowhere else in the Bible are we told how to get faith. So we must first know what the Word of God says in order to know His will. Now many people say, well, I don't have faith. Or will you please pray that God will give me faith? Or maybe I don't pray hard enough for faith, and that's why I'm not healed, or why I don't receive this or that answer to prayer. Well, my friends, the Bible does not teach you to pray for faith. We don't pray for faith to be healed any more than we pray for faith to be saved. Why? Well, the answer tells you how faith comes. Romans 10.17 tells us how to get faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. As you hear the anointed Word, as you read the Word of God, faith will grow. Read it and listen to it over and over again. And the promise of God is, if you are sincerely seeking faith, that God will quicken through His Word faith to your heart. This is the way to get faith. Get God's Word in your heart. The neglect of the study of the Word of God is the reason there's so little faith today. This may explain your lack. You're not feeding on the manna. First Peter 2.2 2, Desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. We must first know what God has promised in His Word, before with any confidence we can claim it. Why? First John five fourteen and 15 tells us, We have this confidence in Christ, that if we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, then we know that we have the petition that we desired of Him. Now John tells us plainly there, that if we pray any prayer, Ask God for anything according to His will that we have already received the answer when we pray. When it's manifested, has nothing to do with it, but we have received from God's side, we have received when we pray, if we pray according to His will. Well, how are we going to know His will? We must know His Word. We must be willing to pay the cost to know the Word of God. And that's the first condition to receiving any promise of God. You must ground your faith in the Word of God. You must know what God's Word promises in order to know God's will. And when you know His will, then you can pray in faith. When you know His will, you can release faith in your prayers because you know this is what He wants to do and what He's promised to do for you. 
Now, if it is not promised specifically or in principle in the word of God, then all the praying and hoping and wishing and desiring in the world is not going to obtain an answer. But if it is promised, either a specific promise or a faith principle, then on the authority of the word of God, you can claim the promise and you can receive the answer. Now, we've seen this happen time and time and time again, where when people learn the word of God, they discover they know the will of God, and then they can release faith for it. Now, we said it must be a specific promise, something God has specifically promised in the word, or it is a faith principle which becomes the basis of our prayer. What is a specific promise? Matthew 6.33 Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of your material needs will be given unto you. Now that is a specific promise. Here's another. James 5.15 Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. There is a specific promise of healing for the child of God. Another promise is to be found in Mark 16 and verse 17. We can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We can cast out demons in the name of Jesus. These are specific promises that we can claim, and there are many of them in the Word of God. Now, a faith principle is John 14:14. 14, 14. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Another faith principle is in Mark 11:24. Listen carefully to it. This is a faith principle which will get you anything you need or even desire if it's in line with the will of God. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now Jesus said you would not only have your needs met, but he said he would give you what you desired if you believe you receive it when you pray. Well, you say, what if my desires are not in line with his will? Well, then 1 John 5, 14 and 15 already gives you the answer to that. God isn't going to give you anything contrary to his will. He isn't going to listen to a prayer that's contrary to his will. John said, we have this confidence in Christ. If we ask anything according to his will, he's hearing us. And if he hears our prayer, then we already have the petition we desired. And so because the need of healing is so universal and continual today, we emphasize this in our messages on faith, in fact, in all of our teaching. Because as we've said previously, if you can get a Christian to believe for the healing of his body, you can get him to believe almost any promise of God without too much effort. Because you see, people are not generally willing to trust their health, their healing to God and his word and his promises. Now, the same principle will apply to any need or any promise you've got, even though we may emphasize divine healing to quicken your faith for that, yet the same principles will apply to any need or promise God makes you. Does God promise healing in his word? Well, if so, then we ought to find it taught. And if it's there, then we can claim it. Now, there may be other conditions to be met, and we'll be dealing with those on the messages to follow. Yes, there are other conditions. But we must begin with the Word of God. We must find out, first of all, if what we need, and in this case healing, is it in the Word of God? If it is, we ought to be able to find it. If it's there, then we can claim it by faith, release faith for it, and receive our healing. Now, it's faith in the Word of God that's going to heal you. I cannot overemphasize that. We stress continually in our teaching and in our messages, in our services, to get your eyes on the Word of God. Stop listening to men who speak contrary to the Word of God, who explain away the miraculous and the supernatural and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the healing for today, saying that was for the first century or that was for the past or the future and there's nothing today except pain and sickness and trying to make it through life the best way you can. You're going to have to choose between the Word of man and the Word of God. Now it's faith in the Word that heals. And note the close relationship in several passages between the Word of God and your healing. Psalm 107.20 informs us, He sends His Word to heal. God heals through your believing the Word where it's promised. Psalm 103 verse 3, He forgives all your iniquities, He heals all your diseases. 
Mark 16, they shall lay hands on the sick in my name, and they will recover. In James 5, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes ye were healed. Isaiah 53, verses 3 and 4. Surely he has borne away our diseases and carried away our pains, and with his stripes we are healed. And on and on in the word of God, Psalm 107.20, you see, is the key. He sends his word to heal. And notice the close relationship between his word and healing in another passage, Proverbs 4.20 and following. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Could it be any plainer than that? The word of God is health and life to your flesh as well as to your spirit. And in Exodus 23, 22, and 25, we are told by God that if you obey my word, then I am the Lord that healeth thee. He tells us in Exodus 15, 26, that he is their healer if they obey his word. It's in the word that we find the faith to claim and receive the healing we need or whatever else is promised that we may need. You can't base faith on anything but the word of God because here is where healing is promised. You can't base your faith on seeing other people healed. You can't base your faith on hearing testimonies of how others say they were healed through the prayer of faith, healed by God. Now, all of that can inspire you to get into the Word of God to believe the Word of God for yourself. And that's true of all the promises of God. Take another promise for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Luke eleven thirteen. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, when I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I began to pray for others to receive. And it seemed that almost everyone I prayed for received the baptism of the Holy Spirit almost immediately. And then I noticed that occasionally they didn't receive. And the Lord showed me that I was not getting the word into them first, that I was just laying hands on them and trying to use my faith for them. He said, you're going to have to instruct them in the word concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's where they're going to get their faith for it. When they know the word, when they know it's promised, that removes doubt from their heart, fear from their heart, unbelief from their heart, and they can exercise faith for it. Now, before you can have faith for anything, there must be no doubt in your heart about God's will in the matter. Faith cannot rise above the knowledge of God's will. And it's only by knowing what God has promised, that he has promised what you need in his word, that doubts are removed and faith comes. For faith cometh by hearing the word. And so the first condition to receive the promises of God, we must ground our faith in the word of God.